In our previous tips and tricks tutorial, we looked at how Rail Clone can be used to create flooring. In this instalment, we explore how to create suspended or acoustic ceilings. This style will use a single enclosed spline to define the area and include lights placed at regular intervals on the X and the Y axis. To get going, open ceilingstart.max. This scene includes everything you need to create this style, including some simple geometry which includes a ceiling tile, the framework and a light and also a single enclosed spline that we'll use to define the area. To get started, go to the Create panel, to i2 software, and create a Rail Clone Pro object somewhere in the scene. Go to the Modify panel, go to the Style Editor, and press the button to open it. First of all, let's create the generator, and add a new spline object. Pick the rectangle from the scene, and wire this into the clipping area input. Click on the Array 2S generator to bring up the properties. We want to go to the clipping area and turn on Extend XY Size to Area. Next we'll start adding some segments. So drag a new segment object into the scene. And then pick the tile. Come to the Z alignment and change it to Pivot. Now let's clone this by hitting Ctrl and V. And then we'll pick this longer of the frames from the scene. switch this to the camera view. So we're going to nest a number of sequences together in order to create this grid pattern. So create a new sequence operator, set it to increment on Y and then plug in the tile followed by the framework and then plug the whole thing into the default input. So what you can see now is the frame here and then the tiles repeating on the X axis. We also want the framework to come in between the tiles horizontally as well as vertically. So clone one of these segments again and pick this smaller section here. Now we want to create another sequence and this time it's not going to increment on the Y axis but on the X. So create a new sequence, set its increment on X which is on by default and then plug the mineral tile into the first input and then the frame x-axis and then plug this sequence operator into the other one replacing the tile input. So it looks like this. And what you'll see now, if we put material on it this will become clearer, what you can see now is that we've got a frame running on both axes using these sequence operators. If we look at it from above you can see that they're not actually overlapping and the tile should overlap this kind of T-shaped frame. So let's come into the frame Y again and change the top and bottom padding to overlap them. So I'll put it in wireframe mode so you can see this and change it to negative 0.8 centimeters and negative 0.8 centimeters. Now you can see that it overlaps. We need to do the same now for the X one as well. We want the left and right to come in. So negative 0.8 and negative 0.8. So now that all overlaps nicely, just to avoid the coplanar polys, I'm going to come down to frame Y and just change the Z transform setting a little, just pulling it down so there's a bit of an overlap there. So now we've got a basic ceiling complete, we want to add some lights, and we can do that in the same way by adding more sequences. So create a new sequence operator, clone one of these existing segments, and then pick the light from the scene. So first let's create some alternate rows of lights. Plug the ceiling segment into the new sequence and then plug the light into that. And then plug this new sequence operator here into this other one replacing the current tile input. And then we get columns of lights. If I change this to increment on Y I'll get rows of lights. So what we can do is continue to add sequence operators to build up patterns in this way. So let's add a fourth one and plug it into the lights input. Then plug this ceiling tile into this new sequence operator. Then plug the light in. We've now got lights repeating every other row and every other column. And by coming into these sequence operators and changing the counters, we can change the number of tiles between each repetition. So um, if I increase this count here to 2, for example, the lights only appear 
every third tile now. I can do the same thing on the Y axis too. Now we've got two tiles between each light in the row and the column. And in this way you'll be able to create a wide range of different suspended ceiling types. Meanwhile, stay tuned for future training or for more information about many aspects of Railclone's features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos and in-depth tutorials.